What's going on everybody? It's another build installment of the WRX wagon. Got the engine back, short blocks all assembled, everything is all been helicaled inside, but we'll be able to take a much better look at that in a little bit. Getting some uh, side skirts getting put on here in the background. And today, we're going to take these heads apart. They're dirty. You saw from the last upload, there were some chunks of metal that were in there. And uh, throughout that, we definitely don't want to have that issue, especially since we sent the short block out to actually get done correct. So now that that's back, we can fill it full of oil. But before we can do that, we've got to get all of these other parts that we took off. You know, and then I've got stacked up over there as well. They've got to be all cleaned and disassembled and then reassembled in the proper manner. So with that said, let's get this done. All right, so you're gonna need a specialty tool in this case for these heads in order to disassemble the valves and take this entire assembly apart. Now, I like using the Company 23 tool. This by all means is not a sponsored video. It's just a tool that I like to use and it makes my job a lot easier. It having the inside here so I'm able to take the perches out and uh, the keepers, the valve keepers out a lot easier. They supply the magnet which makes things much much easier also as well I can keep everything in here and keep it in a nice uh, clean fashion that way I can just go through do the disassembly and the reassembly pretty fairly simple all right so for first step we're gonna go ahead and grab the magnet here oh, it's a really good magnet we'll just say that so we're gonna go ahead and start with the first buckets here this first row and then we're gonna go ahead and work ourselves all the way on over here so that way we can start you know, basically placing them all in order so that we know exact placement of putting them back in the same placement that they were. So make sure you also label everything in the process. So, I mean, this being the intake side, you know that these are all your intake valves and then this being the exhaust portion, you know that this is all of your exhaust assembly. So we're gonna go ahead and we'll start with, you know, per se the, uh, the exhaust you know, E1, E2, E3, and E4. That way we know this is the alignment order. So let's say they get kicked off to the side and scrambled, we know exactly what bucket goes in the same place that it's supposed to go. So we'll go ahead and start with E1. We'll go ahead and we'll pull that right out. It comes out pretty easy on the inside here. And you'll see the, uh, it's hard to see. Those are your shim size. That's how you actually do all your valve adjustment. You know, it's not the video today that we're gonna get into, but that is what that is. All right, so we'll go ahead and we're gonna expose the valve assembly in here. You can see the valves and you can see the seats in here that actually hold the actual spring here, this hat here, this retainer that actually is going to sit in there. So we're gonna go ahead and we'll pull all the buckets out. We'll get those out. And then we're gonna move on to the actual valves and retainers here. All right, go ahead and I've taken all the buckets out in the order that they were in. Now I'm gonna go ahead and I'll take the paint marker and I will mark all these right now before anything gets lost and displaced. And now that everything has been marked, I'll know the destination of where everything goes. That way all the valves are adjusted correctly. Now we're gonna need some hardware so that we can actually bolt this tool down and start pressing all these valves down so we can get the keepers out. So we're going to go ahead and rob some hardware here from the actual cam caps. These are the hardware that you're going to use. That's the placement here. Now you could be a stickler and actually go through and pull those hardware out that are for that cam cap. But in all reality, you are not supposed to torque this tool down. It's just enough just to have placement. So you can actually take any one of these bolts from any one of these cam caps. So I'm going to go ahead and just take these cam caps, you know, hardware here and put them in and then we can start decompressing some valves. Okay, everything is all stacked up off to the side. I'm ready to start pulling some valves out now. So I'm going to go ahead and flip this thing over and we'll label all the valves before we pull them. That way we know the allotted placement for them and we'll go ahead and get this done. All right, so got it flipped over, and we're gonna go ahead and put some paint marker on here. That way we know that all of the desired placement for these, because they 
have lapped all of these valves for each placement, so, or at least we hope they did. But we're gonna go ahead with exhaust one, exhaust two, exhaust three, and exhaust four, intake one, and so on. Take three, take four. All right, we'll go ahead and slide these out. Now they're all popped out, placed exactly next to the buckets that they are supposed to be. That way I know that uh, intake one goes with the intake one, and you know what, make it easy for yourself basically. So we're gonna go ahead, clean this thing. You can see a lot of sediment and debris and whatnot has gotten in it. You know, and, and what you know, you can even see here. Look at all that. You know, we can't be rolling the camshaft on that, let alone even letting the valve assembly pump all that stuff throughout. So we're gonna go ahead and we'll clean this thing down to bare aluminum, and then we'll be able to reassemble everything with some assembly oil. But of course, you can't forget about the other head. We got to take that thing apart as well. So I'm going to go ahead, unwrap that, get that thing all taken apart. And that way I can transfer everything over here. Then I can make myself a little station for the heads and get those cleaned. Oh yeah, and real fast also as well, you're also gonna wanna make sure that you mark here that that is the left hand assembly for the left head. I have mixed it up before and I've had to go through and make sure that I was correct. So without having that stress and that headache, make sure you mark what head those go to. Saves you a lot of time. Well, it's amazing what side skirts do to a car. Well, that paint match is good. Awesome. All right, got everything all disassembled. Everything's already ready and labeled. Looks pretty good. Now we can actually just start doing the cleaning process. Um, I've got to get all of the actual valve seals out here. I'll pluck those out so that we can clean it, take off the rest of the hoses here, and it'll be all ready to go. And then uh, we can start doing some assembly time. He got the side skirts on over here. That turned out awesome. Just did some painting, so if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, go to my last upload and check it out. Got everything laid out now. I took off the hoses and the brackets that way, or bracket, and laid everything out. That way, I know that this all belongs to the right hand side. Everything's all ready to go. We're gonna go ahead and start cleaning this thing out and getting it ready, Freddy. All right, so I got myself a nice little workstation, and what I'm gonna do is just gonna take some brake cleaner, and we're gonna go ahead and clean this thing out and make sure that. After we uh, blow it all out nice and dry, we want to make sure we go in with a nice clean paper towel and 
basically wipe out any kind of existing residue that's left over. Now know that brake cleaner is going to leave kind of a white residue and whatnot, so we want to get that out. That way it's not messing with the, uh, the actual assembly oil or having any kind of cross-contamination. So with that said, make sure that your metal is clean when you are done. Do a visual inspection. Make sure you did it correctly. That way you put it together, you know, have no failures. Okay, before anybody actually leaves it in the comments section, yes, I do normally clean my engine products with Dawn dish soap. I just don't have the ability to do so right now. I'm trying to get this together, and this is another way that you can do it. I mean, there's many right ways of doing things. Uh, brake cleaner is great for cleaning those engine parts. I tend to use the, uh, the Dawn dish soap because it's great for getting all those oils out, and it's extremely safe. The uh, brake cleaner obviously has been used for generations from generation to generation passed down from your pappy that's how he cleaned his engine parts was probably with brake cleaner or some kind of parts cleaner which parts cleaner is usually more aggressive than brake cleaner know that all right everything is clean and has been transferred over here to some new clean cardboard it's all nice and clean i'm happy with it it's all down to the bare metal now it's time to do a little bit of assembly time. Now make sure that you grab the right head, the right hand, and they are left hand, they are labeled. That way you know exactly which one goes with. So we'll go ahead and uh, grab one of these heads and start doing some assembly time now. I'll show you the, uh, the process of doing so. Now it's a little bit of tedious work doing this just for the sheer fact that we're gonna have to throw all those parts over there, back in there, and have to do it in the correct order which is the main reason why everything is labeled such as so. Now we'll be able to grab everything in order and place it back in place of the uh, previous builder had uh, built these heads. So we'll go ahead and assume so that everything is shimmed correctly and we'll go with that. So with that said, I'll go ahead and put everything back together. It's pretty easy. Again, you're gonna need the, uh, the valve tool so that you can compress the valve spring and actually put on the uh, the little cotlets here, here on the bottom here. That's actually what holds all of the, the valve here into the valve seat, or actually the valve seat is here, but uh, they go here, you know, and that's what holds those into place on top of your retainers here. So they actually retain the spring down. So with that said, without a whole bunch of technical terms and whatnot, because sometimes I even forget what the hell they're called. So yeah, we'll go ahead and get some assembly done. Uh, I got oil down, so we got to put down some nice clean area because we don't want any of this oil transferring over to our nice clean head. And yeah, simple. All right, so I laid down a nice clean sheet. Uh, the reason why I laid down a nice clean sheet and not just some extra, you know, paper towels down is because of the assembly oil will actually stick to the paper towel and then uh, transfer over to the assembly. And we're really not trying to do that. You really do not want pieces of paper towel in your motor assembly. I promise you, it's not a good idea. So with that said, this isn't going to stick to it. So I'll be able to flip the head over, slide the valves in, you know, lubricate everything all in the process and get the assembly done. So let's do that. She will go with the right hand since that was the last one that we assembled. Oh boy. Boom. You're going to want to put it in the same placement that you took it apart because we made sure that this back row was one, two, three, and four so that we know that we can come over here grab everything that it's supposed to be in so we know that intake side is on this side intake side is on this side and then on the left hand side intake will be on this side because that's the other side of the engine same thing with this side so we know that we're in the right placement this is the ones that go with it so let's say you know two three weeks passes by this stuff's been sitting here and whatnot you can come back to it it's ready to go now this stuff is not ready to just be put in here. This is a clean head. These are not clean parts. All we did was pull these out and set these in place. So we're gonna have to get these clean individually. It doesn't, you know, it's not like you can just take a hose to this or just some freaking, you know, some cleaner and whatnot. We're gonna have to individually wipe these down and get them all completely dry down to bare metal. So obviously that's really boring, 
and I'm for sure not gonna make you watch that. So I'm gonna grab some cleaner and then uh, some extra paper towels because I'm getting low. And yeah, I'll start wiping some parts down, yay. All right, everything is clean. Everything is laid out in a nice fine fashion. That way I can go through and grab everything in the order that I need it to be, which is awesome. Make it easy for yourself, guys. I live by the KISS method. You know, the KISS method is really the way to go. And for you that don't know what the KISS method means, keep it simple, stupid. So in that, you know, in that message to you, let's go ahead and let's get to assembly. Now, I'm going to go ahead and explain as much as I can during this process. I really didn't explain too much during the disassembly process for the sheer fact that taking it apart is is not, you know, it's it's not that hard. The hard part is actually making sure that you can put it together the correct way so that it actually works the correct way because when you're taking it apart, it's already been put together the correct fashion. So I'm gonna teach you right now how to do so. Now, obviously, if you had paid attention during the disassembly, you got the general idea of how to take this apart. Now, during the assembly process, I feel you're gonna learn a lot more and that's why I'm gonna go more in depth with how to actually build these heads and actually how to load them together. Now, the reason for doing so is, you know, typically when you're even disassembling a car, it tends to go pretty quick, but when you go to assemble it, it sometimes takes forever. And the reason for doing so is there's a process to doing it. Now, you usually can blow stuff apart really easy, but there's not really too much of a process of just unbolting stuff and setting it to the side. Now, for now, Let's get into some explanations of how this is done. I've actually got my apprentice here today. He's gonna to help me with some filming. That way we can get up with some close-ups and I can actually put this together. I really do need both hands to get it done. So he's gonna help me out with doing so. So let's hope you enjoy. And again, if you don't like a lot of drawn out explanations of how you know things are done and you've already done this already, you know, by all means. Fast forward, skip ahead, you know, until this is done. That way we can move on and go from there. Okay, so the first things we're gonna do is we're gonna work our way all the way down from the one row, two row, three, four row, four row, all the way over here. We're gonna start with the exhaust. We'll go ahead and slide this right in here. That's one. Flip this over, slide it in through the guide. That's two. Pretty simplistic. So we're going to go ahead, repeat all the valves here so that we can actually flip this over and get it ready to go. Okay, it's all flipped over. Everything's ready to go. All the valves have been put back in and seated. Now we're ready to start grabbing our valves here, but before we can, or excuse me, valves, our actual springs, our valves have already been put in. But before we can grab our valve springs, we're gonna have to grab these shims here. Now these shims are actually what the actual valve springs sit on themselves, just like that. Now the reason for this shim is because this is soft aluminum and that is some hard ass freaking steel. So you put your shim in here, and this is what takes your abuse. It shims the spring abuse. So that's what we're gonna do now, is we're gonna go ahead and take some of these, we'll plop them right in there. By all means, do not drop this dry steel onto a dry aluminum head. We're gonna have to take some assembly oil. We're gonna come across here, we'll flip this over, We'll dab some assembly oil on the back side. We'll then do the same thing on the inside of this perch. All the way around, make sure it's properly lubricated. And then we'll grab the bottom of the spring. We will lubricate the bottom portion of this so that we know that this has proper lubrication. So that we know that this will sit inside of the head, not do any damage, it's not gonna be metal on metal. And then we'll lift up the hat, spring hat here. We'll do the same thing on the inside of this collar. We're going to run some assembly oil here. And the same thing on the outside of this, this ring here on the top of the valve spring. Just like that. So it'll be assembly oiled shim, a spring, assembly oiled spring, and then the assembly oiled hat. 
and then we'll go right over here to these little collars here and we'll be able to do the placement in here and lock them into place on the designated cut on the valve that's how they lock in they have a tooth portion that's in the dead center now that portion is actually what locks into place as you can see the little the little ring that's on the inside of these collars and that's what's going to lock into the portion of that into the hollow valley here cut out on top of the hat and they are in a cone shape they're not perfectly round Let's see if I can get this to focus there we go so there you go you get the idea so they'll fall in to place bada bing bada boom but in order to get them to lock into this we're gonna have to put the spring compressor back onto place compress the spring and then we can put the collars back into place and as you saw when I took it apart um, actually no I don't think I showed that part so we'll go ahead and make sure you get to see the placement of how they go in okay so everything has been lubricated here on the exhaust portion as you can see the exhaust side and everything has been in place now all it has to be done is the spring to be compressed itself and then I can place in the locking collars into the valve and lock the assembly into place and then these valves will be fully assembled. Now beforehand you can see that I've got the little shims down in there underneath was lubricated as well as the top and then slid down in there into the little collars that it actually has a little cutout. you can see on the center of the shims underneath the valve seal there that little bit of a metal exposure there that's actually the collar that they'll lock into place on and then we'll be able to reach right over here grab a spring pop off that retaining hat we know that's the top one that's where it came with so we're just going to go ahead and go with that and grab some assembly oil now I'm not going to do this for every single one of them because mainly for the fact that I can go a lot faster doing this with two hands and not filming make sure that's coated correctly um, you can't use too much of this I'll, I'll be honest with you place that down inside spin it give it a nice little spin make sure that it is in sitting in the shim which it is I'm gonna go ahead and take some lubrication here and put some assembly oil right on the outside of the collar here so that we know that that's not going to be bare metal on metal I'm gonna grab the center of it so we can keep as much lube on it and then we're gonna set that edge right on there boom and as you can see it pushes it out perfectly and then that is how you do it and that's how we brought to this portion here so I'm gonna go ahead and repeat get these other three springs in here in the order you know three two one three two one and I've proceeded to get it done now let's go ahead and we'll move over to getting these springs compressed so we can get these collars to lock everything in place and we can have a nice assembled valve assembly and then and then and then we can move over here to cleaning more parts yay so I thought I was going to be able to have my apprentice today to actually help and he's tired. So he ended up bouncing. He's got, uh, he's got a full time job. So it is what it is. So with that said, I'm going to try and set up this camera and see if I can give you guys a detailed idea of how to actually put those collars in there. I think I can probably do it while filming in one hand, but hey, I'm going to, I'm going to try my best. So work with me. Okay, so I'll go ahead and put on the spring compressor here. And go ahead and load this into place. And what I mean by not putting any torque on it, I'm just gonna give it a little bump. Just a little bump. That's it. Not even the allotted torque that they're supposed to be spec to. And now we're gonna go ahead and we'll put in this open perch here. And that comes with your company 23 tool. And then we will then thread in the rod. Now make sure one side has a hex head, the other has the pivot head that actually fits directly right into the top of this hat here. You can see it here. 
That fits perfectly, and that's how you get these centered. So, to make sure you get proper centered compressed valve. Whoop. Well, we'll go ahead and we'll speed up to me having this already in there because this is already Fumble City. Okay, so what you want to make sure is when you get this down and you actually get it to set in there, don't be afraid to, to align this with your finger to make sure that it is centered over the valve. You do not want to actually push this top hat down onto that valve because you could damage it, you know, obviously, metal on metal. So we're going to go ahead and compress the spring. Now, as you turn it in, uh, hold on, let me get a light on. How's that? Okay, so we're going to go ahead, we'll start bringing this down, compressing this spring on the inside portion of the head. And this will expose that cut portion on the valve, on the end of the valve. There it is. So that's where the collars will sit and lock into place on. Here. Yes, they're a pain in the butt, but uh, they kind of sit right up in there, just like that. These little half moons. Oh, actually, hold on. Gee, I'm a stickler when it comes to putting this stuff back together. I'm going to put it back exactly the same way I took it apart. These collars were already preloaded on this valve assembly. Now, in this instance, when you get these as a kit, you put them where you want them. But me, uh, a little bit of OCD. It, obviously, you can put these wherever you want. They, they just lock in the valve into place. But I want to... Oh, actually, that's, that's the wrong one I'm grabbing. It's this one here. I want to make sure that I get them exactly where they were. So then we'll grab this. See, this is what I mean by they're a pain in the butt. Sometimes they fall off to the side. I just kind of want to guide them into place. They are a pain in the butt to do sometimes. Um, I will use sometimes dab some assembly oil on them and it, it's good to use it. It's almost like glue. You know, because it'll stick right to your actual the tool that you're you know using. Come on, fall into place. This is probably the worst I've had to fight with something like this. Alright, well, there we go. Okay, so that's one. And we'll go ahead and do the other one. This is the time consuming part. Just set that there. I kind of just threw it there because you can kind of manipulate it and put it the way you want it to go. Come on. Alright. And that's in there. I'm going to lock that in. Boom. Okay, so that's one. And no, that does not take me that long to do that. Um, it's hard to film. And it's hard to do this like this. So, again, I'm not going to film all of this. So we'll go ahead and decompress that spring. We'll bring that valve spring right back up, locking this into place into the perch that it is designated for. So you can see that that's spinning, that's loose. Now we can start just hand loosening this. We'll get this up and out of the way. Oh, not quite tall enough. Okay. Bada bing, bada boom. And then you can take this out and move it over to the other side because this valve here is now loaded. All right, I finally got all that done. Uh, it's not very fun to do. It's kind of tedious and a little bit of boring. But hey, it is what it is. It's got to get done. So with that valve assembly already being ready to go, now it's time to focus on getting the, uh, the buckets on now. Um, what you're going to want to do is take some assembly oil, put it here on the inside, and let me turn the light on. Alright, so on the inside, that way it's not metal on metal. Same thing on top of here, so that when the cam rolls across it, it's also not metal on metal. 
So again, um, we're going to go ahead and slide these buckets in here. Make sure that the outside portion here is also lubricated so that you can actually slide the bucket down inside. And there's no grinding and gouging and scratching and whatnot. So that way you don't have any damage occur. So once the, the heads are actually loaded, um, you cannot put the cams on here and get it going for the sheer fact that the head studs are directly underneath the camshafts. So you're gonna have to come over and you're gonna have to install some head studs now. So what I'm gonna have to do is unwrap this. We'll go ahead and flip this up to 90 degrees and then uh, we'll start putting in some ARP head studs in here and all the allotted holes. And then uh, put a level on them, make sure that all of the studs are completely the same level all the way into the block. And uh, yeah. It's, it's pretty relatively easy. You do not torque ARP head studs. They just go in there until they bottom out and then you wanna find the happy medium for all of the studs. And then we can go ahead and slide on that head and then basically put everything to torque spec. ARP torque is 30, 60, 90, but you're gonna to have to put it in the, uh, that's foot per pound torques by the way, uh, in that sequence and you know, you're gonna to have to do it all within sequence. Uh, again, I'll provide that when it comes time, but for now, Vlogging, it gets tiresome. It's It takes a lot of my time during the day. So for now, I'm gonna go ahead and just end that right there. Uh, when you guys tune in next time for the next upload for this WRX wagon assembly, we are gonna be a little bit farther along. We're gonna be ready to start torquing down some heads down on this short block that came back. It's all been hella cold and ready to go. I'll be able to give you guys some better pictures on the next upload and whatnot. But hey, Thanks for tuning in and sticking with me this long. I know it was a monotonous upload. It, it was a lot of explaining and a lot of detailed portions were put into it, but that's sometimes it's not fun. It's not always fun at least. So I'm Bill Schneider. This is Rumble Garage. I work on only cars with the stars, Subaru only. Have a good day guys. I guess I probably better show you how to put a bucket in. Um, I don't want to get yelled at in the compliment or in the compliments. <laughs> I wish that's how it works. I mean, in the comments. So yeah, um, I'm gonna go ahead and grab this this I1 right here and take one bucket. You know, it's gonna go over here into the intake portion. You know, and then uh, we allotted this as the as row one. So I'm gonna go ahead. I'm going to try and film and lubricate all this. At the same time, we're going to go ahead and put this right on that tappet. Boom. As you can see, nice little dab. And then uh, I'll be able to, now we'll turn this onto the side. Roll this a little bit. Okay. Stand this up and we'll lubricate this. It's a messy project. Be ready for a mess. You know, so that way this is all nice and lubrication. All right, with it being lubricated such as show, we will then slide it nice and easy, okay? Nice and easy. It pretty much falls in anyways. As you can see, it's going on its own, but just give it a little bit of... And the, the assembly oil is, is pretty thick, so it, uh, as far down as it goes, boom, done. All right, so it's seated. It's pretty easy, guys. You know, you're just going to want to make sure that that inside portion of where the valve hits right here it's got a nice gob you know and same thing with this side it's not rocket science guys it, it i mean it is science actually i should i shouldn't lie it is science this is science but it's not hard science it's easy science so we're gonna go ahead we'll lubricate the piss out of that we'll go ahead and we'll drop that right into place we'll make sure that it's Bada bing, bada boom, get a little turn skis. There it goes. Little bop, bop, bop a -roo. Okay, and that's in. You know, and guys, it's pretty easy. We're gonna go ahead and, and go through that. But hey, man, again, thanks for sticking with me. 
wait for that next upload. I know I can't wait because then we get to freaking start doing some assembly on a motor and that's usually something that I enjoy. So time for me to do these other heads. You guys have a great day.